Within a span of four years, 88 Glam went from one of the hottest up-and-coming duos bound to hit the mainstream, to now split up and never going to release another song. They were even signed to The Weeknd's EXO record label, giving them a massive co-sign in the Toronto scene. However, after being mysteriously dropped from the label in 2020, today 88 Glam members Derek Wise and 88 Camino literally hate each other. First of all, Derek Wise, he threatened to kill me. This nigga threatened to murder us off of music. Derek's the fakest nigga in the game. To put the final nail in the coffin, Derek, aka Glamboy, has now switched all of the official 88 Glam accounts and social media pages to his own solo ones, making it very clear that Camino is out of the picture. But looking back, the entire career of 88 Glam was filled with a lot of unanswered questions. Like what actually led to the group's sudden split? Why is there so much bad blood between Derek and Mino? And why was 88 Glam even dropped from XO in the first place? They had originally claimed that it was a personal choice and business decision to leave XO. However, as we begin to answer all of these questions, the sad truth is much deeper than it appears. Derek doesn't care about his real friends. He never cared about me. He never, all he cared about was being on EXO's dick. I'll never rock with that nigga again. Like, for real. Like, I wish that nigga the worst. Glam honestly had so much potential. With the group's unique mix of trap and R&B, their contrasting flows fit so well with each other and their chemistry was off the charts, which is what makes the duo split even more unfortunate, although one that seemed inevitable from the start. Derek Wise and 88 Camino were two Canadian rappers who had each been releasing solo music long before the start of 88 Glam. Derek's debut mixtape dropped in 2012, while Camino has music dating back to 2009 under his previous artist name Drew Howard. The two had already heard each other's music prior to first crossing paths in the Toronto club scene. And I uh, just met him through like local party scene. He knew who I was, I knew who he was, and we just became friends. It was it began it began with a friendship actually. Derek and Mino immediately hit it off. Then after soon moving in together in the summer of 2012, they began officially releasing music as a new collective. However, this new group was not 88 Glam, but rather a trio that went by the name Get Home Safe, featuring another Toronto rapper Jazz Cartier as the third member. For the most part, they were still releasing music separately at this time, although promoting themselves together and making very valuable connections along the way. One of those connections was with rising superstar The Weeknd, who also discovered the group through the local party scene, and then included both Derek and Jazz in his King of the Fall music video. As we'll see in a second, this would later help lead to 88 Glam signing with The Weeknd's record label. But at the time, this cameo gave the Get Home Safe members a huge boost in clout. However, However, soon after, Get Home Safe would split for unknown reasons. But despite choosing to pursue solo careers, Derek and Camino still stayed in touch and still worked on music together. They were each making a name for themselves in the Toronto scene. Mino had a few singles catch on while Derek released his first album, Inglorious, in early 2017, featuring 88 Camino on the track I Can Tell. Fans immediately noticed the insane chemistry between Derek and Mino. So then, in the summer of 2017, the two began teasing their first ever collab project, although it wasn't actually their idea. I used to always like send the tracks that me and Camino would make to mm -hmm. my manager, and then like eventually he's just like, yo bro, like shit's all been fire, like what about, what do you think about y'all just becoming a duo? Thus, 88 Glam was formed. 88 Glam was an idea that people saw the potential for before we did, the duo told Billboard. It's rare that two different aesthetics can meet the way ours do and create something so organic. As a combination of the names 88 Camino and Derek's nickname Glamboy, 88 Glam officially released their debut single 12 in November of 2017, alongside a music video for the song which included a cameo from The Weeknd himself, who was a big fan of their sound and wanted to help put them on. Although they weren't actually Actually signed yet, 88 Glam received a lot of push from EXO members since the start. The Weeknd would announce the tracklist on Instagram for their debut self-titled mixtape, released a week after their first single. Another music video dropped and this one directed by EXO co-founder Cash, titled Bali with a verse from EXO artist Nav. We sent out track to like, you know what I mean, someone that was on our team, and then they heard it and they were like, 
Oh, we sound good on this? <laughs> nah, you know what I mean? Like, just like that, they sent it off to the boy, and then he heard it, spazzed on it, you know what I mean? I heard he did that shit in like 30 minutes. The now platinum track Bali was a huge smash and really put 88 Glam on the map. While it was clear they were in some way affiliated with EXO in the weekend, it wasn't until the following year in 2018 that Glam officially signed with EXO Records. So for us, it was like, we were like huge fans. We were like, oh, you know, this is crazy. Like, yeah. this dude is like changing the game and he rocks with us, you know? To celebrate their new signing, their debut project was re-released through XO and Republic Records a few months later in April, before then joining Nav on his freshman list tour that same month. Everything seemed to be going great for 88 Glam at this time. With a unique sound similar to the likes of Nav, they were bringing a fresh style from the Toronto scene. Camino handled most of the hooks with his fire high-pitched falsetto melodies, while Derek's bars and contrasting flows completed their song so well. From that point on, we sort of developed our own sound. We sort of had our own, you know, our own cadence, our own, like, you know, like, especially with a lot of the producers, too. Like, the beats were pretty similar. They were dark and, mm -hmm. like, moody and, like, after hours, but sort of mixed with, like, R&B. They were able to keep the momentum rolling throughout 2018, dropping their debut studio album, 88 Glam 2, in November, followed by another re-release deluxe with added verses from Lil Yachty and Nav. You can't sign to EXO if you are not meeting a certain expectation. Camino said, We know that Nav does numbers. We know that Abel does numbers. With that being said, we know we have to come to play every time. We have to make sure we deliver quality sh** every single time. And that's honestly what they were doing. With super fire hits like Lil Boat, It's a Flex, and Snow Globe, just to name a few, the future was looking very promising for 88 Glam. However, 88 Glam 2.5 would become the duo's last release under EXO Records. And nothing was ever the same again. March 5th, 2020. 88 Glam announces their highly anticipated new album, Close to Heaven, Far From God. As the group's third release under EXO and Republic, the project was set to feature some pretty big names. Lil Durk, DaBaby, Rich the Kid, PMB Rock, Lil Keed, and Nav. Along with this tracklist also came the weekend's announcement for his upcoming After Hours European tour, which was set to kick off in October of 2020 and feature 88 Glam as an opener. However, now would mark the beginning of the end for 88 Glam. That same month they announced their new album and tour, rumors would start spreading that the group had been dropped from the EXO record label. Fans noticed that not only had Glam been taken off of the EXO and Republic websites, but also that they had been removed from the upcoming After Hours tour. Their Instagram handle changed from 88 Glam EXO to now just 88 Glam. Fans also noticed that EXO members including Cash had unfollowed both Derek and Mino. And then, to make matters worse, they also pointed out that Derek and Mino even unfollowed each other, suggesting something major happened behind the scenes. So what happened? 88 Glam would later speak on what went down, although as we're about to see, it was really just excuses and lies. It was a personal choice to go the independent route. Every artist started off as independent so the experience is already there. Being on the other side of the wall for a bit taught us what we needed about the business, so we felt moving into this new chapter and owning masters was the most important. Then along with using the convenient excuse of coronavirus for delaying their new album, the two would also speak to Complex about the from XO. Those are like the big bros right there, Derek said. I was talking to them the other day. There's definitely no bad blood, no tensions, nothing like that. It's like literally family. However, Camino wasn't so fast to clear the air, and you could tell did not feel the same way. I mean, like, we don't really want to disclose that information right now. Like, we're not even trying to go too in-depth with our relationship with the label and XO. I feel like that is something we'd be more open to discussing in time. But we don't want to step on anybody's toes and just want to keep our relationship good with all of our business partners. Out of respect for the people who put us on, I think it's just better that we don't go too in-depth with that conversation for people yet. The most logical reason for EXO dropping 88 Glam is because of the allegations against both Derek Wise and 88 Camino. 
Back in 2013, Derek Wise was arrested on 15 charges related to human trafficking. However, these charges of trafficking a person, threats of death and bodily harm, overcoming resistance by choking, and weapons robbery and theft were all later dropped, despite many people speaking out against him. Around the time of the Close to Heaven, Far From God announcement, more rumors and allegations began circulating about Derek. To make matters worse, Camino also found himself in rumors about sleeping with minors. Now, while neither Derek nor Mino have ever been criminally charged, all of these accusations in Derek's shady past began giving 88 Glam a bad reputation in the public eye. At the time with it being the start of quarantine and with cancel culture on the rise, I believe EXO knew that it was just not a good look for the label and their artists to be associated with 88 Glam anymore. But there also does appear to be more to the story. During their time with EXO, 88 Glam was never allowed to feature on the same song as the weekend, which is pretty strange to be honest. I'm like, Abel signed me, he didn't even give me a feature. He didn't even give me one feature. This nigga makes, a, ma ma makes 500 M's a year and he can't give his nigga one song. It was even to the point where the label started sending 88 Glam songs to The Weeknd and Nav to use as their own, such as Like What Happened with Price on My Head. As it was originally a Glam track that they wanted The Weeknd to feature on, but EXO manager Cash said no. The only reason that me and Abel didn't make a song was because of Cash. He's like, yo, I'm gonna hop on Ziploc. He's like, yo, I'm gonna hop on Into Flex. And every, every single time that Abel wanted to hop on one of my songs, Cash was like, nah, let's just put Nav on it. Despite The Weeknd himself wanting to do a song with 88 Glam, the label would not allow it. The best they really did was let them feature on Nav's deluxe album. Throughout my research, I definitely get the vibe that Derek was always the one who cared the most about rolling with XO. While it seems Camino and Cash were never super fond of each other, along with controlling who they do songs with as well as probably more that happened behind the scenes, there was also allegedly an incident one night at the club, where Cash essentially ignored them to party with Future, which didn't sit well with Mino. Niggas have no respect, bro. Like, don't you think that's weird? Imagine how, imagine you're my artist, and I'm like, yo, pull up to the club, and then I pretend I don't know you. After splitting from XO in 2020, Derek and Mino were able to reconnect as a duo, now releasing music independently. Their next project was not the previously announced album, but instead an 18-track mixtape titled New Mania. The following year, 2021, would still not see the album release, only a three-track EP to continue holding fans over. But ever since XO, it seemed like 88 Glam did not care nearly as much about the music and the group's future. They were not doing close to the same numbers as before and their hype had significantly died down. Close to Heaven, Far From God would finally drop in August of 2022, which now appears to be the last 88 Glam project we'll ever see. To kill the album's hype even more, many of the songs and original features were no longer able to get cleared. The DaBaby, Lil Keed, and PNB Rock songs were all removed, and the Nav and Lil Durk features were replaced. It kind of felt like they released this album just to shut the fans up, with some people even speculating the new cover is them attending their own funeral. If it wasn't already clear that 88 Glam is done, Derek has now switched all of the accounts to his own personal ones, leaving many fans of the group upset. Derek, who now raps by the name Glamboy, would recently drop his first solo song in years titled No Choice, which again, unsurprisingly, is doing numbers nowhere close to what 88 Glam did. Glamboy was my brother. 88 Glam was blood. Mino tweeted, Derek was always my favorite rapper, but people in between tore brothers apart. That people in between is likely referencing XO management and more specifically Cash. It seems that Mino hates Cash, but Derek chooses to be friends with him rather than Mino, which has led to the end of 88 Glam. Derek's whole f***ing scheme is to just be friends with XO that don't even like him. Like he doesn't even know, he doesn't even know who he is. He doesn't even know who his real friends are. These past few months, Camino has been acting out of line on his Instagram lives. I honestly don't know if it's drugs he's on or if he's just really going through it mentally, but these rants have been another very bad look for him. From spouting anti-Semitism, to homophobia, to being extremely rude to his fans, and even using racial slurs often. Now, there are two sides to every story, and Derek has remained very quiet these recent months. Mino continues to go on these tangents without ever really explaining 
the exact truth of what happened. Because as he says, then people will call him a snitch. Like if I actually get into t to detail about what these is actually did, you'd be like, ah, oh, this is snitching. You'd be like, ah, oh, ah, oh, he's a snitch. It is sad to see 88 Glam go out the way they are. However, with careers filled of controversy combined with the fact that they never treated each other very well, the duo split was bound to happen someday. I really enjoyed their music and like I said believe they were headed for mainstream success. But after everything Camino has said, along with Derek changing all of the official accounts, unfortunately it's safe to say that 88 Glam is over.